Good morning. Good morning, Good morning church. Good morning. Good morning. I hope that you all will have a wonderful, blessed, peaceful, restful, sanctified, wisdomful, refreshing of the mind, Sabbath, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Oh. That's so wonderful to be here again to bring the truth, the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And that's what we need this morning. The word of God. Truth. Not my words, but the word of God. I am just dust of the earth. I'm nothing. Yes, I'm just a servant, a slave of our master, King of kings, Lord of Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. and a messenger. That's what I am. Just like you all, I'm just a sinner who needs to be saved, yes, by Jesus Christ. So I hope that you will enjoy the truth, yes, and that you will share the truth, because the truth is what all of us is very, very in need at this moment. The times are evil, but God is good. We trust in God. We obey God and everything will be all right. Before we start, before I go on, let us go on our knees and have a word of prayer and beg God to take the reins. Our loving Father, we give thee thanks and praise for your goodness, thanks and praise for your love. Father, as a sinner, I come before thee. I beg you, O Father, to take the coal of the altar and put it on my lips and tongue. May you have total control of me. But Father, please forgive me for my sins. Any way that I have sinned against you in my thought, in my actions, oh Father, forgive me. Cleanse me first as a sinner, oh Father. And as I am converted by thee, oh Father, use my lips and tongues to do thy will. Thank you, oh Father, for being your slave and your servant. In the name of Jesus, and I beg you, oh Father, for the whole congregation, to have a receptive spirit so they can receive the truth, acknowledge it, embrace it, and be like the truth. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, we will start right away with the sweet word of God. As I speak this week with a sister, and we were talking, and she sent something from me from Testimonies, Volume 6, page 154, paragraph 2. As we study, I hope that you have your Bibles. King James Version Bibles. Yes, I hope that you have that. And it's very important to have your King James Version Bible. Yes, you don't come to church without your Bible. That is not possible. And if anyone visiting friends who have no Bible, please, deacons, deaconesses, go and sit with this person and please help this person to understand and read the Bible. Because without the Bible, the Word of God, you cannot understand this message today. Have a pen, have a paper to write down the, the um, quotations, the, the scriptures. And so, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you can go home and study for yourselves under the Holy Spirit's guidance for you to understand. So he can clarify that to you, that this message is thus said the word of God. And under his guidance, then you can obey what God says. Yes? Remember that. So, as we go on, as I speak with his sister, and we were talking a very interesting topic, and she sent this, this um, quotation for me from the Testimonies, Volume 6, page 154, paragraph 2. It says, our teachers need to be Constant learners, constant learners. That is what our teachers should be. The Seventh-day Adventist teachers should be constant learners. The reformers need to be themselves reformed. That's where it stands. Oh, wow. This is true. It is pure truth. And it go on, not only in their methods of labor, but in not only in their methods of what? Labor, but in their own hearts. They need to be transformed 
by the grace of God. God is good. God is good. It put me think about myself. Mirror time. It's mirror time. And this morning I was blessed by the Sabbath school um, class. Very blessed to the answers that it was given. And I said, Lord, um, well, they're preaching my message. <laughs> I was thankful. I said, well, uh, Lord, why should I preach? Because they are preaching it already. So I said, well, it's good to know that because we are on the same line. Yes, we are together. We synchronize with each other. So as the brother, the brother um, sitting right there said, uh, Matthew 7, verse 3 till 8. And I thought of myself when the, when, when the sister gave me that scripture. I went to Matthew 7, 3, verse 8, and it says, And why beholdest thou the more that it is in thy brother's eye? But consider not the beam that is in thy own eye. Wow. Say, yes, Lord, that is true. That is very true. Or oh, how will thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat out of thy eye, and behold, a beam is in thy own eye? Lord, have mercy. You know, that's why God told Peter. We know Peter, right? One of the disciples of Christ. God told Peter in Luke 22, verse 31 till 32, if I'm not finishing the scripture completely, you should write it down and go to it at home. So, as God is working with me, myself, remember right away Luke 22, 31, and verse 32. He says, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, put your name right there. Because God is talking to us today personally. I put my name right there. He says, Eugene, Eugene, behold, Satan had desired to have you personal, that he may sift you as what? Wheat. But I, Jesus, have prayed for thee. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have a Savior that pray for us. Amen. That thy faith, look what Jesus is praying for me. That thy faith fail not. Wow, my faith fail not. Well, we're going to go through that today. Faith fail not. And when thou art, and here it comes, God says, Eugene, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Wow. When thou art converted, well, yes. That's why we have to um, study Psalms 26. Brother Enoch was talking about Psalms. I know every time that Brother Enoch, he loved the book of Psalms. Even in the Pathfinders, he tell them every day read the book of Psalms. A very inspiring book. Yes, you can learn a lot. And Psalms 26 says, examine me. That's what the first thing we should do. Yes, preachers, teachers, examine me. I need examination from God. So Peter, when Eugene, when you are converted, only then strengthen thy brethren. So we got to go through a process before we start strengthening our brethren. That is very, very important. Because brothers and sisters, we got to know that, that um, God, we know that we are living in which time? In which time we are living? End time. Hmm? End time. End time. Oh, yes. What is, what, what is end time? How can we see that in prophecy? Hmm? What did God told us in Leviticus 23? We are living in what? In the days of what? In the days of atonement. Yes, we're living in the days of atonement. So what did God told us to do in the days of atonement? Get right with God. Uh-huh. Well, somebody says something to afflict. Amen, sister. We need to afflict your soul. Let's go to um, um, Leviticus 23. God told Moses in Leviticus 23, verse 26. Um, you can read it from 23. And go down right to 32, but we're going to read verse 26 and 27. God told us, 
In these days, what we should be doing, yes, it says, but, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, also, on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of what? Atonement. Sanctuary language. That's sanctuary language. And we need to study the sanctuary to know what this is. It's very important that the church may study their foundation because the sanctuary is our foundation. We got to live the sanctuary, walk the sanctuary, eat the sanctuary, and we have to prepare. Because where's Jesus now? In the sanctuary. In the most holy place. Where should we be right now? In the most holy place. Wherever the shepherds go, the lambs follow. So we should be right there with him. But are we ready to be there with him? That's a personal, that's a personal thing. I can't tell you if you're ready, yes or no. <laughs> that's why it's mirror time. Eugene, are you there with me? We're living in the days of atonement, a very serious time. We cannot play games. Yes, we have to be very truthful, embrace the truth, as we hear the truth and act upon the truth. And that is true love. We were talking this morning about love. Love is action. We got to act love to understand love, to know what is love. So we got to act upon love. And we have talked this morning, the lesson, the lesson study was powerful. Do we really love our neighbors? That was the second commandment. But do we really love our neighbors? And the answer was very good. Everyone is our neighbors. Here in Dundana, Dundana, we have a lot of neighbors. A lot of neighbors. So we can share love. Share love. You will be sharing love. Oh boy, you will be the man of love. Wherever you go, you will reflect Christ. So there is much to do. And there's where God wants to bring us now. There's very, very much to do. We want to be lovable. We want to be like Jesus. Well, we have to act upon love and be like Jesus. We can't just say, listen, both brothers and sisters. It says here, we're living in the day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls. Wow. That's a deep heart searching. Examination time. Yes, in Jesus Christ it says here, afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So we need to afflict our souls. We got to examine ourselves daily. And we can't do it. We got to hear the Holy Spirit show us. Dig deep in our hearts and show us if there's any wickedness in us that we should stop it. And that is very, very important, brothers and sisters. So that's why this morning, as I pray, I say, take the altar, take the coal of the altar. Do we know what is that? That mean? Take the coal of the altar and put it on my lips and tongue. Why? Because we hear it many times. Preachers say that, but why? Listen, go to Isaiah six, verse six to ten. You can write it down. It says here, Isaiah 6, verse 6 till 10 says, Then flew one of the saprins unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar, and laid it upon my mouth, and said, Listen good to what they say, and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity. Wow. Thine iniquity, the one who the coal have been laid on their lips, from the altar on their lips and tongue. Thine iniquity, my iniquity. Yes. It's not just when Jesus says, who shall I send? And say, oh, well, I, I, I want to go send me. No. The coal of the altar, have it been laid on your lips and your tongue? My iniquity. I have to be cleansed first. The process have to be, you have to go through that process first. You have to be cleansed. My sins need to be confessed. Yes, 
God is doing a cleansing first in his own before he sends them out. So God says here clearly, and thine iniquity is taken away. Yes, and thy sin purge. Well, now you can go. It says, also I heard a voice of the Lord say, whom shall I send? And now it comes, and who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. Only then. God wants us to go through that process first. And then he can work with us. So I had a good shaking up this week from God. And God is telling me, Eugene, it's mirror time for all. Not only for you, but for all. For his whole church, it's mirror time. It's time to be like Jesus. It's a cleansing time. Afflict your souls. Make it right with God. And then when God asks you, who may I send? Oh, yes. When you're converted, then you can strengthen your brethren. Yes? So now listen, God. Here we go. More of the truth. Isaiah, everything that is done is on the screen. Yes? I hope. Let me see first if I'm doing it good. I'm not accustomed to this. To the left. Point to the left. Oh, pointing to the map. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Okay. And go back. Yes. Okay. Now. Now. Isaiah 8 20. For all of us. King James Version. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Did you understand that? Mm -hmm. Teachers, preachers, whoever is standing here, Sabbath school study or preaching or whatever, it should be according to the what? To the law and to the testimony. Bible and spirit of prophecies. The law, Bible, you're not going to go through all of it because we wouldn't finish for today. Yes, the law, Bible, testimonies, testimony of Jesus, and the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecies. That's what we as Seventh-day Adventists stand for. God's church, God's remnant church. Seventh-day Adventists, that's what we stand for. We teach by the law and the testimonies, the spirit of prophecies. And it's very good to know that this morning as you hear the Sabbath school and everything is by the law and the testimonies. Yeah, the spirit of prophecies. Very, very nice. And even the sister was reading some things here out of the spirit of prophecies, which is portrayed in the message. It says here, clearly, when you find men questioning the testimonies, spirit of prophecies, listen good, finding fault with them and seeking to draw away the people from their influences, yes, be assured, brothers and sisters, be assured that God is not at work through them. It is another spirit. Are you listening? So if I come here trying to draw you away from the influences of the testimony, the spirit of prophecies is because what? Yes, the spirit of God is not in me. Are you listening? Because it's very important at this time, this crucial time. So think about that. Think about that. It says here, the greatest one of the world is the one of men, men who will not be bought or sold, men who in their innermost souls, this is what God wants are true and honest. What? True and honest. Men who do not fear, fear to call sin by what? It's right name. Sin is sin. Men whose conscience is as true to the duty as the needle to the pole. Men who will stand for the right 
Go the heavens forward. That's what Christ is looking for. Yes. That's the way Seventh-day Adventists should be. Yes. Education page 56 and 57. It says clearly, God cannot use men who in time of prayer render strength, courage, and influence of all are needed, are afraid. Can't use you like that. We need courage. We need to go to Christ to take a firm stand for the right. That's what God is looking for. Take a firm stand for what is right. He calls for men who will do faithful battle against wrong. It is to such as these that he will speak the words, well done, good and faithful servant. God help us. Brothers and sisters, every conceivable message is coming to counterfeit the word of God and always bearing the inscription of truth watch out upon its banner and those who are prepared for anything new and sensational will handle these things in such a manner that our enemies will charge all that is inconsistent and overdone upon Mrs. White, the prophetess. There will be counterfeit messages. Yes, that's why we can't sleep. When the message is being presented, no sleeping. Anyone, you see anyone side of you sleeping, just give a nudge and say, wake up, you slugger, how long shall you sleep? It is written. <laughs> It is written, wake up, because there will be counterfeit messages coming from person in all directions. Yes, the remnant church is under attack. All kind of messages will be presented. So we got to be very alert. One after another will rise up. The spirit of prophecy is saying, appearing to be inspired when they have not the inspiration of heaven, but are under the deception of the enemy, Satan, that old serpent, the dragon. All who receive their messages will be led astray. And we see it happen right in front of our faces. We got to be like who? The Berrians. Acts 17, 11. How did the Berrians act? These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. In that day, received the word with all readiness of mind. That's the way we got to be. And search the scriptures, what? Daily. Why? Whether to those things were so. So you can't just sit and accept what I'm saying today. No, you've got to study, stretch the scriptures daily to know that what I'm saying here today, if that is the truth. Philippians 4, 9, remember, Bible is spirit of prophecy. Let the word of God speak to you all. King James Version, those things which ye have both learned, he's telling me, and received, and heard, and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. So what God wants us to do? Do. Whatever we have received, both learn and receive and heard from God, we have to do. You can't sit. You have to do what? Do whatever you have received. And that is what God expects from us. Now warnings from God. Warnings from who? From God. Our Creator. Now listen good to these warnings because this is news flash. And the sister read a piece of it this morning. Very interesting. God begins with what? Warning. What is our warning to this word? Anyone knows? Come on. Huh? 
Amen. That is the fourth angel message. Seven day Adventist was raised to bring which message? Fear God. Huh? Fear God. The three angels' message. Specifically, where to one? Fear God. And yes, I heard it. The third angel's message. Yes, all three, but specifically the third angel's message. A warning to the world. Yes, because we write in that battle. We can't deny it. It is here. It is here. So that message, the third angel's message, need to be preached. And we seen it happening, transpiring right in front of our faces. But if we sit and don't go, how they are they going to know? How are they going to know? We can't be on the internet the whole day. No, we got to go. Some don't have internet and some don't have time to listen to you. Well, we have preachers, studies. I just give studies to on the internet. But that is not all. God wants us to go. Meet them with the truth. And the truth is what? If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark, where? The same shall drink what? The wrath of God which is poured out without mixture, without mercy. Wrath of God is vengeance. The plagues. So if we say we love our neighbors, we should tell them, brother. We should get out here and tell them this does share the word of God. It's going to happen. Yes. It's coming. So we can't sit. We got to go out of love because I love my neighbor. I will go to him and tell him, listen, if any man worship the beast and his image, but I'm telling him in love because I love you, I'm telling you what is going to happen. So we need to make a plan. We need to go and not sit. Oh, Father Jesus, and if we go, well, this place will be too small to receive the blessing that God will send in. If we go prayerfully, this place is too small. You don't have a place to put these people. But God will make a way. He will make this place bigger to, for them to fit in so they can worship God. But we need to trust God. We need to have faith. Amen. Brothers and sisters, faith. It says here, but warnings. God is warning us. God is showing us what is transpiring. So that's the way God begins. He warns us. He, told, he tells us what is really happening right in front of our eyes. And we need to make haste to bring that message. We need aggressive evangelism right now. Amen. There's no time to lose. Amen. No time to play games. People's lives is a state. I cannot tell you I love you without warning you of the danger which is coming. And if we are on God's wrong side, oh Lord, you hear what the message said, the third angel message. The third angel message. Many have received, many is placing themselves, their mind. It's a mind game going on. Their mind is being transformed, bewitched. They're hypnotized, even within the church. It's in the church. There's danger in the church, poison in the pot. And we don't wake up. But we need to tell them the truth. Because the truth saves. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Listen, brothers and sisters, warning. Those who honor the Bible Sabbath will be denounced as enemies of the law and order. It's transpiring. It's transpiring. Brothers and sisters, we see already, I don't want to talk much about that because that's the topic of the year. And it looked like it ain't going to stop. But I don't want to go too much in that. This corona business and vaccine business, <laughs> Brothers and sisters, listen good. We have the health message God gave us to go hand in hand with the gospel. 
Amen. We as Seventh-day Adventists don't take vaccine. Amen. Our vaccine Amen. is Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Amen. The leaves. Amen. That's what God gave us. The fruits, the greens, the nuts, the grains. We bring healing. And we listen, what we don't need to be sick if we are holding to God's word. He told us in Genesis 1, what should be our food group? Three fruit group. Nuts, grains, and fruits. But now because of this simple world, we have vegetables. Meat is not in that fruit group. Coca-Cola, chicken, and all of these things, Kentucky Fried Chicken, McDonald's, and all of these things, is not in our fruit group. We don't like no quickie food, and we don't like no, 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 um, how do you just call it? Um, toxic food. We don't like, we don't, we are not toxic. We have God. This body belongs to Jesus. Amen. It's the temple of God. Give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. If he want to take vaccine, he didn't take vaccine. Amen. But we, this body belongs to God. Amen. This is the temple of God where the Holy Spirit dwells. So don't poison yourself. Amen. God says, who destroyed the body temple? He will destroy. Yes. Yes. Amen. So we've got to wake up, brothers and sisters. You see? That's why God tells us, be very alert. Satan, when he saw in the dark ages, he was killing God's children. Know your history. He was killing them. When Satan said, okay, well, I'm killing these people. Now they're going to the stake and they're burning by the singing. Yes. They're burning and the singing. And all who were standing there watching, Oh, yes, kill them in this night. When they saw them singing, they said, have been converted. Amen. When Satan saw that, he said, you know what? Come. His wicked evil angels are called a confederation. Uh, 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 uh. Yes, a meeting. So listen here. The only way we can win this battle, because the more we kill, the more springing up. Yes. So we are on the losing side. He knows he's a loser. Amen. He knows we lose. He has but a short time. But the promise is he will take more, as much as many possible with him in the lake of fire. And he want to keep that promise. But we, your brothers and sisters, should tell him you that promise will not be fulfilled. Amen. You can take, but not all. Because we are going to do the work of God. So now they call this, come at this, this meeting. And what he told them is, we're going to work from within. Yes. Them. Yes. We will sit among them, accept the theories, be among them, and when the time is, we will get a chosen horse. And that's what he's doing. But where are the watchmen? Where are the watchmen? We got to be watchmen. Don't forget, if these people are not warm, their blood is going to be on our head. God will require their blood on us. Each and every one of us had an opportunity to profess Jesus to someone else. But what have you done with that opportunity? Watchmen wake up. So now listen good. Listen good. That thing about vaccine, stop it. Do not take it. If you don't want to die, do not take it. Because now they've seen already that what have been said is true. The immune system is breaking down. Yes. And now they're bringing a booster to boost the immune system to keep it a little bit up so it can fight against disease. If that immune system falls, you are in trouble. I saw it with my own daughter. She died. Yes. And I saw when you don't have an immune system, you're in trouble. You are open for all kind of sicknesses yes. and disease. So pay good attention. Your vaccine is Jesus. The thing what we need to be telling people that they need to worry with is the wages of sin is death. Yeah. That is what we should be telling people. Worry with that. Put your focus on that. Sin, go and sin no more. That's what Jesus is watching. So, brothers and sisters, says here, those who 
honor the Bible Sabbath will be denounced as enemies of the law and order, as breaking down the moral restraints of society. You see how it transpired already? No, you can't go here, you can't go there, you need a QR code and everything. So now, it's actually telling you that you must yes. obey us to get in those places. Well, God is good. I love it. Shut them all down. The bars, the cinemas, the dance halls, and everything. Shut them down. <laughs> oh, yes, you're doing the work for me. Go ahead and shut them down. So we can have more people staying home and we can go and bring the message so they can be converted. Amen. So this is our chance. Lead them, shut them down. And we can visit these people. Now it's our chance. You see, God arrested even the Jehovah Witness, the Methodists, the Baptists, the, the, all of the Pentecostals. God arrested them at this time. The Corona, you the Corona. He leave the Corona happen and arrest them. You see, now the Jehovah Witness don't want to go and knock on nobody, no. Because they're afraid, no, Corona. That's God. Now it's our chance to go out. In then doing it. Preach the word of God all over and all and God will bless this place. Amen. It will bless it. No God is speaking to us. No God is calling us to get up and do his work. So God's saying here that we will be the enemies. And it says as breaking down the moral restraints of society, causing anarchy and corruption, and calling down the judgments of God upon the earth, their conscience scrupulous will be pronounced Abstinency, stubbornness, and contempt of authority. They will be accused of disaffection toward the government. Wow. You see that happening? You are going against the government. The law of the land is to take the vaccine. Well, I will have to stand. We ought to obey God rather than man. Amen. Government or not, if the government, the law of the government is going against the will of God, I will not obey. Never. Never. So now listen, God, brothers and sisters. Ministers who deny the obligation of the divine law will present from the pulpit the duty of yielding obedience to the civil authorities as ordained of God. Wow, are they doing that? Yes. Prophecies fulfilling. Right in front of our eyes, we see that they're doing that within the church. Yes, sir. Where are we going to wake up? When it's too late? And we like lambs, just following, yes. We become just like the Catholics. When the Pope says, oh, 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 yeah. everybody, oh, oh, yeah. we need to know what he's saying, but we follow with him. <laughs> Whatever they say, we just do. But then, listen, good brothers and sisters, everything what we say have to be thus said the word of God. Amen. So now, <laughs> this is transpiring. And we need to start. We need to call sin by name. And this is sin. Whenever you're telling a church to follow the government, which is an open defiance against God, that is sin. <clears throat> and then we should ask ourselves, are you really with God, with his church, with the remnant church of God? Or are you against the remnant church of God? Listen, go in legislative halls and courts of justice, commandment keepers will be misrepresented and condemned. It is coming. It is coming. God told us in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 20, 21 that this will happen. These people, these legislative halls will be corrupt, totally corrupt, and we will be condemned. But God will give us a mouth. The Holy Spirit will use us. That's why we need to study, study, and do. Because he will use us when we are in those court halls that 
the enemy will have nothing to gain say or resist what we have said so now listen brothers and sisters. it says a false coloring will be given to their words the worst construction will be put upon their motive this is good whatever you're doing good well they're going to say that is not good it's evil it says here as the protestant churches reject the clear spiritual argument in defense of god's law they will long to silence those who Faith they cannot overthrow by the Bible. Though they blind their own eyes to the fact they are now adopting a course which will lead to the persecution of those who consistently refuse to do what the rest of the Christian world are doing and acknowledge the claims of the papal Sabbath. It says here clearly, my time is already nearly up. We ain't even shall start. But next time we will go more and more deeper. The dignitaries of the church and state will unite to bribe. They will do what? Unite to do what? Bribe. Persuade or compel all classes to honor the Sunday. That's why that warning. God is telling us from beforehand what they will do. And that's why the third angel's message that warning. They will do what? Compel all classes to honor the Sunday. Remember Revelation 13. The lack of divine authority will be supplied by oppressive attachment. Political corruption is destroying love of justice and regard for truth. It's happening. Listen, we all are guilty till proven innocent. Yes. But is it, it have to be so? Yes or no? Guilty till proven innocent or innocent till proven guilty? Innocent till proven guilty. But they are so corrupt, now you are guilty till proven innocent. And in that is, you will be still guilty. Just like Jesus. The people are being confused, just like Pilate. Look what Pilate did with Jesus. Pilate declared there is no fault in him. I have examined him, says Pilate, to the Jews. I have examined him and I find no fault in him, twice or third time. And now as he washed his hand, he said, you know what, I am washing my hand from this, but I find no fault in him. He's a just man. Confused. And so we see that the political and all these people, the government is confused. And it's going to get worse. It says here, and even in free America, rulers and legislators, in order to secure public favor, will yield to the popular demand for a law enforcing Sunday observance. They will yield. Why they will yield? We see the poison is being spread already right now. Poison in the mind, yield to the government, whatever it says, do it. It says, go to the vaccine, do it. So when that Sunday law comes out, it's easy. All will yield. And God is watching. God is permitting this to happen. Because now you're seeing who is who. By their fruits, you will know them. Now you're seeing who's standing with God and who is against God. God is seeing all of those things. Now as we reach the end, liberty of conscience. Liberty of conscience. Listen good. Which has caused great a sacrifice will no longer be respected. Are they taking that away slowly? Yes, yes. yes or no? Yes. Yes. Your choices will be taken away from you. It will be taken away. Yes, and it's doing that. This is a form already going in that direction. You don't have nothing to say. Whatever the politics say, you do. That's what they're going to do. And it's going that way, and God is showing us clearly. But if we are asleep, 
we will not know it. It will just pass us by. And Jesus too will pass us by. Salvation will pass us by. So we got to wake up, brothers and sisters, your liberty of conscience, which has caused a, so great a sacrifice. Look at the reformers, what they went through. Look at the apostles, the prophets, Jesus himself. Yes. <laughs> he says here clearly, in the soon coming conflict, and that's why, brothers and sisters, as we close, we need to give up these books. I saw them right there. Oh, so glad that this church is upholding this. We need to go out and carry these books. God wants us to go. We didn't reach that piece yet, but God wants us to go carry these books. It says here, in the soon coming conflict, we shall see exemplify the prophet's word. The dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with who? With the remnant. Who's that? Who's that church? Come on, you know it. You're sitting right here. The church of God, Seventh-day Adventist. This is the church of God. This is the remnant. And you will see that literally will be fulfilled when to make war with the remnant of her seed, which who do what? Keep the commandments of God. Do we keep the commandments of God? Yes. yes. And have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now quickly, um, we're going to close, but let me just quickly go to, next time we will do all of this, but let me go to something that God wants us to close with. Very important. Because the women need to know that there is a Seventh-day Adventist church. There is salvation for everyone. And this is the church is where they have to be to receive the good spiritual food which will save them and their families. So it says here clearly, the great controversy, yes, these two books, the great controversy should be very widely circulated. Should be what? Very widely circulated. It contains the story of the past, the present, and the future. It contains everything. If you know what she went through to write this, angels had to be sent to protect her. Yes. And don't forget to have a little small one before this. Mm-hmm. But in season, in season and all the season, this is what we need to do now. In, in its outline of the closing scenes of this earth history, it bears a powerful testimony in behalf of the truth. I am more anxious than the LG White to see a wide circulation for this book than for any others in I have written. Amen. For in the great controversy, which we end now, the last drama, drama of the ages, the last message of warning, the last message of what? Warning. Look at right here, warning to the world is given more distinctly than in any of my other books. Well, this should be a daily study too. You start the school. Because before you got to share it, you got to learn it, live it, know it. So when you go there, you go over knowing what you're preaching. Because it is written. And don't forget, put your Bible right by side of it, right on top of it. Because this is just a little light shining on the bigger light of the Bible so they could get understanding in which time we are living and what they should do. So now listen, it says here, volume four of the great controversy on mass the deceptions of Satan. Yes. You got to tell them, you want to know who he really is and what he's planning and what he's going to do? Volume four. Yes. And we may accept that the enemy of all righteous 
righteousness will put forth every force in effort in his power to keep away from the people that which unveils his arts. You see? He will do anything that you may not carry this. So we got to be prayerful. Church, come together, pray. Pray in Jesus' name for protection, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding so we can go and do the work. It says here, but Satan is constantly seeking to intercept every ray of light that God sends to prepare the people for what is before them. You need to be prepared. It's coming. And if you're not prepared, you will fall. It says here, to those who should give the light to the world, we, he will present plans which appear to be for the prolongation of truth, but, but, which will in reality hinder the works. These plans appear so plausible, however, that they are accepted and thus his object is accomplished. This is why volume four, the great controversy, has not received the attention it should have had. Are we giving attention to what the prophetess has right to us for this time? Are we doing the will of God? In Matthew, Mark, Luke, God says, go, preach, teach, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's what we need to be doing. Go. Don't sit. Go. Bring them into the fold. Do your work. Be watchful, prayerful, and what? Do the work. And be ready and stay ready. That time has come, people. We can sit and receive, 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 and don't share. We need to share the gospel. The health and the gospel goes hand in hand. Amen. Don't forget, as you share, share this thing. Share it. Because it helps. In this book, which have a lot of help, you can have this um, Ministry of Healing and one, one more of the books, one name more. Anyone have one more of the books? Uh, which one was L.E.G. White have written about, about health? Council on Health. Council on what? Diet and Health. Okay. Many books. Give them together because you see the people that are sick mentally, physically, and spiritually sick. They need help. And now is a good time. Now that everybody's sick, now we can be the doctors under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We can present them the health message. Help them. Help them. Tell them what is good for their body. And this is a book that helps you. Even in this book, it says clearly that we should not take no vaccine at all. All diseases, malaria, polio, and everything that we take all them vaccine for when we were little children, we should not be taking them again. Because in the book, you got help remedies, nature that can help you avoid those sicknesses. So listen, good. You got your baby, hmm? the one who just had the children, and if they're coming to you with any things of to vaccinate the child and everything don't for do sickness, <laughs> don't do that. That's a dead sentence. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why our body is so sick and it's fighting. It's fighting against all of these sicknesses. It stays in there and it damages the body. <clears throat> you have natural things. Use the wisdom that God has given you. God bless you all, Amen. keep you all, watch over you all. Amen. And may the God of peace 
bring peace to you all in your souls. God bless. Thank you very much. Let us kneel. Oh, loving Father, we are thankful, O oh Father, for your goodness, but we beg it to let the Holy Spirit intercede for us. Father, thank you for the spiritual food that you have given us today. Amen. Thank you for the truth. We need, O oh Father, to do the work. Because as we do the work, we will see and we will understand Jesus. Jesus, our creator, walked this earth. And wherever he is, oh Father, wherever he went, he was on his father's business. We as the Seventh-day Adventist Church, help us to be on our heavenly father's business. And go, teach, preach, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Father, and wherever we go, Father, you says that you will be with us till the end of the world. So please, Father, be with this church, O oh Father. Help the leaders to stand, walk forward, and may the members, together with the leaders, go and do the will of God. Amen. And Father, may you bless this place and fill it with souls who have surrendered all to Jesus. Amen. We ask all of these things, not because we are worthy, but with forgiveness for our sins, in the precious name of our loving Father, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.